So far, everything is going according to plan for Shannon and Lauren Haynes. A storybook wedding, a happy marriage, even meeting career goals. Shannon recently got her master's degree, and Lauren will finish up nursing school later this year. But there's one more goal they'd like to meet. We both knew that we want to be parents. Um, he has a really strong family, and so do I, and so we knew that that was something that was going to be important for us. So. The Haynes also know this will be one of the most, if not the most important decision in their life, the decision to have a baby. So they want to be sure to have all the facts. I'm not a professional, and I wanted to make sure that I knew from my physician what the important things were to do. Um, you can look on 10 different websites and get 10 different answers. Um, you can read all kinds of books. But it's kind of like anything else, you want to get as much information as you can so you can make the best choice. For the Haynes and other couples like them, the best choice is preconception planning with an OBGYN. But not everyone does this. Only 20% of couples having a baby go through this planning process with a physician, a number that's causing some concern in the medical community. It's surprising to me how little thought is given to the potential for some serious adverse outcomes in a pregnancy for both mom and baby that people just don't think of. They're just excited about the process of creating life together. And that's great. I'm an obstetrician, obviously I love that excitement, but I want to see them with an outcome that they also desire. I'm very excited actually for our interview today because it's... To help achieve a desirable outcome, Dr. Anderson Brooks makes sure to cover all the bases. When we're doing our preconceptual counseling, we will do certain blood tests to assess the mom's health, assess the father's health, if there are certain risks associated with adverse outcomes. For example, diabetes. If it's uncontrolled in the first trimester, it can have a much higher risk of pregnancy loss or miscarriage, much higher risk for uh, fetal birth defects or malformations. And in the control scenario, that risk can be greatly reduced down to the normal population. In addition to a complete medical history for both mom and dad, preconception counseling will include advice on something that's often overlooked, exercise. Patients are always surprised. They think, oh, I'm going to have a baby. I'll worry about weight loss and exercise later because it's going to put weight on me. It's actually the opposite. You want to go into the pregnancy in the best condition possible. The exercise that's recommended is a minimum of 30 minutes a day, three to four times a week. That can be walking. I allow treadmill exercise throughout pregnancy, at least up until 28 to 32 weeks. The weight training, um, patients can do upper body weight training and lower leg weight training generally up until about 20 weeks and then I reduce that significantly. Proper nutrition also can have a major impact on your pregnancy. A key component to reducing health risk for your baby is folic acid. That's a B vitamin which helps protect against birth defects of the spine and brain. Doctors recommend taking a multivitamin with 400 micrograms of folic acid every day before pregnancy and during early pregnancy as part of a healthy diet. Foods that contain folic acid include green leafy vegetables, beans, citrus fruit, liver, and whole grains. One thing that's not part of a healthy pregnancy diet, caffeine. We start to recommend less than two caffeinated beverages and I always have to remind patients caffeine comes from a lot of different sources so it's not just coffee. We're talking about your sweet tea and your chocolate intake. And you can't talk about planning for pregnancy without talking about smoking. Now everybody knows that quitting smoking is a must for women trying to get pregnant, but just as important is avoiding secondhand smoke. This is where a husband can prove to be a great influence. Either you're changing his habits as well, or he is the best reinforcer for what the doctor says. Just as important as physical preparations are the mental and emotional preparations for both mother and father. One of the things I'm most afraid about mm -hmm. is just going from being Shannon mm -hmm. to being mommy mm -hmm. in his eyes. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I can still be his wife mm -hmm. and not just be a mother. I appreciate how you stated that because I think it's it's crucial for couples to really um, identify time for each other after the By asking the right questions and making the right choices, Shannon and her husband are off to a great start in family planning. We kind of have a philosophy um, if we can outserve the other one, so we really take care of each other a lot and so that's really important to us. And there's no guarantees of anything, but I hope that through our preparation, it means that we are more ready to be parents, that we're ready to support one another. A solid partnership. That's the best foundation for a healthy pregnancy.
For Smart Medicine, I'm Rod Starnes. Joining me now is fertility specialist, Dr. Raymond Key. Dr. Key, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. How long does it take for the average couple to conceive once they're trying to conceive? Well, that depends on a lot of things. Probably one of the most important is the female partner's age. Mm -hmm. On average, it takes, oh, a 20-year-old woman in this country probably about two or three months to get pregnant if she has everything else being equal. By the time she's 30, that probably drags out to about six or seven months, and by the time she's 40, even for a healthy 40-year-old, it might take a year to get pregnant. At what point should a couple trying to get pregnant go see a specialist or, or go talk to a doctor about uh, fertility? Well, if you read the textbooks, Kim, they all say 12 months of trying, you should go see a doctor. That's the medical definition of infertility. But you know in the real world, we don't live by textbooks. And around the sixth or seventh month, a lot of women are becoming quite anxious. My advice would be that when you get to that anxious point, Go see your OBGYN or even your family doctor for some advice. And what would you say the most successful treatments for infertility are? If you're talking about technology, the gold standard would probably be to proceed with in vitro fertilization. But simply that's not acceptable to some couples. There are artificial insemination techniques. There are so-called fertility drugs. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes just um, an evaluation, some alleviation of concern stress relaxation techniques, even alternative therapies can, can help sometimes. Dr. Key, thanks so much for joining us. A lot of really good information <laughs> Thank there. Thank you.